All right, so Trevor Lawrence got paid, but there's a bigger picture that involves one of his teammates that says a lot about this team. We'll talk about it today here on Locked On Jaguar. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Exactly right. It is your team every day here on Locked On Jaguars. We're at your team every day. We always thank you for making us your first listen. Thank you for joining me. I'm Tony Wiggins, the host of Locked On Jaguars that you can find over on our YouTube page. If you want to watch a video, that's right. Go to Locked On Jaguars. Make sure you hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button also. And then hit that bell so you get notifications each and every time we drop an episode. Now, for audio purposes, if you're driving or at work, the ear pods in and you're sneaking, then make sure you check us out wherever you listen to your audio podcast every single day because here at Locked on Jaguars, we don't want you to miss one thing. That's right. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning bet, $5 bet, that is, any winning $5 bet, $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. A shout out to the everydayers for joining us every single day. We absolutely appreciate you uh, taking time to do that. And you can be an everyday if you're not one. All you got to do is join us every single day. Make sure you say hello to me when you see me in public. Like my man, Big Will. He says his son, Little Will, listens to the show every single day. So I wanted to make sure I said hello to Will and Will. All right. So here's the thing. We're going to talk about this, where we're going to land this trip. Who's next? Who's next up to get money? And what does it mean? I think we're going to hang around at the cornerback position when I talk about that. But I may have a little bit of a different take on it than everyone else. But first, uh, before we get to that, Josh Allen and Trevor Lawrence, they're twins. No, they don't appear to be twins and they aren't twins. (laughs) If you see them, you know damn well they ain't twins. But they do have twin characteristics of who they are as people. And I think it's very, very important that this team has those foundational pieces. And we'll talk about that. And it's important. But Trevor getting paid means so much more. That's where we're going to kick the show off today. It means so much more because if you have been a listener of Locked On Jaguars, you know, you know where uh, I have uh, been in terms of team building, in terms of foundational pieces, in terms of cornerstones, in, in terms of every two or three years, this team decides that they need to pour another slab. So they they got to tear the house down that they're already built. And they never got the elevation that uh, you never saw a house. You know, you, you saw a house that always seemed to be getting built. It reminded me of my uncle. I had, my uncle had an old Chevelle, right? a red Chevelle with two black stripes over the hood. It was always on blocks and he'd always go out and start the car, but he never drove it. I think my uncle built that car for 20 years and never drove it. It was just his, it was just his baby with a real shiny engine. That's kind of like I feel with the Jaguars. They've been on blocks for a long time, but now this new uh, commitment to two players, two high, highly drafted players who were given second extensions, uh, given contracts, that will probably put them here for, I would say, at least eight years, maybe 10. I think it signals something, and I'm going to tell you what it signals. It signals to me that the Jaguars finally believe that they got their their leaders, their cornerstone guys, and Josh Allen, as well as Trevor Lawrence, the two best players on the team. I believe that they think, okay, this is what we're going to build on. Now let's move forward and set this frame up. Let's put the drywall in and windows. We are good to go in terms of all the trimmings and all of the things that have to happen for the Jaguars to be a successful football team. It is going to make team building much easier. And one of those reasons we're going to talk about in segment two is because of the likely or the likeness that these two guys, uh, Josh Allen and Trevor Lawrence have. Josh got his money first, but we always need to make sure that we take care of the quarterback positions because until you get a quarterback and this is, this is really about Trevor Lawrence here. Until you get a quarterback that you are committed to, notice I did not say until you get a quarterback that everyone unanimously believes is the top 10 guy. That's not uh, where this is, although I think Trevor Lawrence is a top 10 quarterback. 
but that's a whole nother argument debate that has been going on on social media even in barbershops i was at that barbershop saturday and that talk i had a fight party at my house saturday night and boy they talked about that and it was very 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 polarizing to hear folks talk about it the thing is is though when you commit to a person uh, a quarterback like trevor Lawrence, worst case scenario he's gonna be what he's been the last two years which has been pretty decent right by all metrics and whoever however you feel about him the way he's played the last couple of years if you take away all the hype and you take away all the expectations and all of the adjectives and superlatives that people put on his name he's played pretty well uh you you, you know i we had a, a couple of our locked on hosts say that he was the 16th best quarterback i disagree with that i think that's the i think it's way too low for trevor lawrence in fact i think it's it's super super low yet another columnist or, or media type out of miami say trevor lawrence has never beaten an elite quarterback and he's two and oh against josh allen he's two and oh against justin herbert he's one and one against lamar jackson i don't know uh what elite quarterbacks you're talking about yeah maybe he didn't play he didn't play against troy aikman he didn't play against ben roethlisberger or did he did he play against roethlisberger before roethlisberger left? but my point is is he, he didn't play against Joe Montana. I mean, what elite quarterbacks you talking about? Because every time I sit and, and see people talk about elite quarterbacks, the guys that I just mentioned that he that he that he has beaten before, they're listed. They're right there. So, you know, people are going to say things and, and have opinions about Trevor Lawrence. But that's why we tell you to watch local and listen to local. It's me and a whole bunch of people that's doing local content that's telling you more about this team and we're not being biased about it we're being honest we're telling you the absolute truth and trying to give you some context as to why it's important it means more for me from a team building perspective because once you have committed to him you're no longer looking for him which means you can now concentrate on all of your efforts on making sure you have the guys around him have you heard during draft coverage that people say stuff like ah, they ain't ready for no quarterback now they don't have an offensive line they don't have a wide receiver they don't they don't have, you know, you can't bring a guy here in this situation. You you hear that and I always wonder, like, when is the right time to get a quarterback? When is it? Is it before you get all of those things or after you get them all? Or if you need one and he's there, do you just take him? Because the bottom line is you, you might get to the point where you need a quarterback or you feel like you know when you need a quarterback and uh, he's not there. And you end up drafting guys that shouldn't be drafted and you're hanging your hopes on him, which means you really don't have one. You know what I mean? So I think the commitment to him allows the Jaguars to say, okay, that's our guy. We've paid him as if we think he is a franchise quarterback. So therefore, that's, you know, I, I saw it on the wire. They said, even if it's a lie, it's, it's, that's what we fight on. We fight on that lie, right? So my thing is, is the Jaguars, whether – other people believe it or not, and that's not a requirement for them to uh, move how they want to move. They believe it. They believe they have their guy. They have made the financial commitment to that guy. And now they can proceed as if they have their guy, whether you believe it or I believe it or not, which I actually do believe it. So I think it makes team building a lot easier because now you know exactly where you stand and who's going to be your guy for the next six or seven years. And now you can start to build a team around that person's skill set. And you can start to fortify the offensive line even more. And drafting is going, drafting and developing is going to become super important now because you've spent a lot of money on Josh Allen and you've spent a lot of money on Trevor Lawrence. I'm going to tell you why it's important to have like minded teammates and how something Trayvon Walker said this weekend from his camp up in uh, Thomason, Georgia. And shout out to 44 for giving back to the community as well. But it's something that he said. He said he watches both of those guys show up early and leave late. And that motivates him. And that's why they got paid. That makes them twins. That makes them twins in terms of work ethic. And that makes them both people that you should be happy and proud that the Jacksonville Jaguars have committed so much money to as the cornerstones of this franchise. I'm going to talk about the importance of that and how we uh, can add to that and who's next. We'll get into it in just a second here on a locked on Jaguars. 
Today's show is sponsored and brought to you by FanDuel. Now, summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more. And you can bet on it all at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 bucks you can use to bet everything from the Finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. Now, the Finals are going back to Boston. Uh, Boston is up 3-1 against Dallas can Dallas keep that momentum up or will Boston try to close them out tonight at home and if they don't and they have to go back to Dallas I think they're going to eventually go back to Boston because it'll be a seven game series so visit fanduel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list fanduel is America's number one sports book Thank you for joining me once again here on Locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day. I am Tony Wiggins, and we are headed to segment two. We talked about Trevor getting paid and why it means more. If, you, if you're if new here, over the last four, maybe five seasons, I kept asking and pondering this question. Why can't the Jaguars ever get past the slab? No, I'm not talking about the slab where the Bowl City Brigade as their tailgate, although that's a lot of fun and you don't want to get beyond and past that. What I am talking about is the foundation of building a house and you want to see at some point the end results, right? They have always just started over. If you go all the way back, Jalen Ramsey didn't get a second contract. Uh, He was traded. If you think about uh, other players that did not get second deals, uh, Dante Fowler, if you want to talk about him, uh, Luke Jokel may have gotten a little bit of a second deal uh, uh, one year, but was never a foundational piece long term. Blake Bortles got an extension, but one year he played one year and they canned him after that. They extended him and then cut him the very next season and just ate the the dead money. Too many guys did not get second contracts. Allen Robinson didn't get a second deal here. Marquise Lee did not get a second deal here. So many players drafted that we thought were going to be the cornerstones of everything, and they ended up leaving. So you you start over every single year. Well, there's a time when I thought Josh Allen wasn't going to get a second deal, but he did. He got a big extension this offseason with the Jacksonville Jaguars. It, it just – when both of the Jaguar players in the offseason, when they got these big deals, right, it really just signaled to me that the Jaguars were able to do something twice this offseason that they usually don't even do once. And that is guaranteed that a, a player that they picked extremely high in a draft got money and got paid and is going to be here for a whole second round of his career, which is four or five years before he has to maybe do another contract or another deal. They did it twice and they did it with two players that have something very, very common that makes them monolithic. And that is they are good people on and off the court, um, on and off the court, on and off the field. They are hard workers. They're first in last out type players when it comes to and other players watch it. As I mentioned that Trayvon Walker said, he's I witnessed it. I basically I'm paraphrasing, but he said, I witnessed these guys come in early, work hard, leave late. Uh, and how they carry themselves and basically it's motivation and that that, there's nothing more you could say about players that uh, makes you feel more confident that these guys are really 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 what you need in your franchise how many times have I used the term football playing justice guys that love the process that are in love with getting better that are in love with the work that requires guys that are going to be leaders I often see Josh Allen working after practice with players man and it really 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 means a lot that this offseason the jaguars have decided that they are going to uh, re-sign two cornerstone pieces and you couldn't have two better guys i mean two better people that are also pretty damn good football players and and uh so kudos to them kudos and by the way trevor lawrence uh obviously was the first pick in the Trent Balk era, but Josh Allen was a, a Dave Caldwell pick. And they decided to stay with both of them uh, and make that monetary commitment. 
And uh, the thing that they are both just uh, other than the fact that Trevor was number one and Josh was number seven, and both the top 10 picks. The thing that makes them twins, in my opinion, is they work hard. They're both really, really good people with the media, but they don't sugarcoat things and they absolutely tell the truth. And they're accountable. They want it on their backs. They want to be uh, exactly in the position that they are in. They don't shy away from the leadership aspect of it. And I think that bodes well for the Jaguars. So we can start start maybe talking about uh, who's next. And, and we're going to do that in segment three. We're talking about who's next. And using those two guys as the prime example of dudes that get extensions. In the past, I know I've made a lot about it. Uh, we pay too much to, to personality because I wanted them to extend Jalen. I wanted Jalen to be here. I wanted them to pay him. Um, I don't mind the guy that makes a little noise or has a different personality. But I do think that there's something to be said about how people want their building to look and how they want it to feel. And there were times in the past where really, really good players were not necessarily the most approachable people uh, not just for media and coaches, but just other people in the building. And I do believe that these guys, because of how you have to communicate and how you have to follow people, I said, uh, I did an interview and I said, it's a pack mentality. If guys want to follow people that they like being around. It's just a part of it. And both of these guys represent people that uh guys like being around so many congratulations from other players that are on this team and i've never heard anyone say a bad word about either one of these guys uh when it comes to who they are as people what how they lead and uh, how they play they'll follow the, the 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 teammates for the most part will follow these guys anywhere and that's exactly what you want if you could create just create something that says franchise type player. It would be both of these guys. Both have a similar, similar personalities. And I say they're twins, but come on now, you know Trevor and Josh ain't twins. One guy's black, one guy's white. They don't look nothing alike. But what I mean is on the inside, the things that really, really matter when it comes to making a commitment of this sort, they're the type of people you give money and they're not gonna get, they're not gonna get complacent. You already know it because they have pride. They have uh, they love the game. They love the process. And this is why I think it's a really, really good deal for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to ask this question, though. Who's next? A lot of talk about Tyson Campbell. And that's also a polarizing issue and a polarizing situation. I'm going to mention this, though. Some folks were asking me this weekend. If you were the GM, would you have done it? Well, if I was the GM in the situation that Trent Baalke is in and even Doug Peterson, I think it was a joint decision. Here's what I tell you. Where you going? If you don't believe that Trevor Lawrence is the guy, you have to you have to make that decision. Who are you going to get? Who are you going to get this year? Who are you going to get next year? You're going to be right back in that same situation that if you don't believe he's the guy and you're not committed to him, you know what that means? That means that you you, you got you got one eye on him and one eye on who else you can find to come play the position. And that puts you right back in that situation. I said I was glad the Jaguars got out of where there wasn't a commitment. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is this. If you built this team this offseason in order to get the absolute best out of Lawrence, and I think they will get better statistics, you know what's going to happen if you didn't extend him? It was going to cost you a lot more money next year. And folks, you know, will tell me, well, that doesn't matter, man, because if, if he's never going to be worth $275 million, then he's never going to be worth $275 million, and you just can't give it to him. I said, okay, fine. Well, guess what? Here's what happens. If he doesn't show that he's worth $275 million, or if he doesn't improve to the point where all these questions go away, Doug Peterson and Trent Baalke probably won't be here after 2025. So this extension will be somebody else's problem, not theirs. And I hate to break it down like that, but that's why you do it. You do it because 
if he turns out to be as good as you believe and your commitment suggests that he is going to be, then guess what? That, that means you got him for a bargain because two years from now, that $53 million a year ain't going to look like a lot because all of the other guys like Jordan Love and Tua Tagovailoa, they're all going to get paid. But if you are right, and even if, well, let me say this, if you're not right, then it ain't nobody else's problem. So that's why it's somebody else's problem, not yours. So that's why the commitment and the timing of this was absolutely correct. Now you can start focusing on who and what's next, what positions and what players. We're going to sit at that corner position and talk about Tyson Campbell because I do think Tyson Campbell is the one who's next. And I know there are a lot of people that disagree with it, but I'm going to tell you why even that makes sense. And we'll do that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars in our third and final segment. All right, third and final segment here on Locked On Jaguars. We're at your team every day. We always thank you for making us your first listen. Um, a quick reminder that if uh, you haven't seen it yet, Locked On Sports Today is free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for your every day, for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming and yelling that you might see on TV, right, on ESPN. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, who's next? I think it's going to be Tyson Campbell. I think the third-year corner going into his fourth year is going to be the next player that the Jaguars consider giving a contract extension to. And I think it's smart to do that because I anticipate with this particular defense that they're going to run that there have been a lot of players that have played in this defense for these particular coaches that have a similar build, body type and skill set to Tyson Campbell. I think sometimes we discount the fact that different coaches can bring out different things with different players. So what you saw Tyson Campbell do under another coach and he, and he was really – he had a, a sort of an unhealthy year in year three. I think what you're going to see is more of the year two uh, – the year two Tyson Campbell this season. And I think the Jaguars would be smart to get in front of it because if they don't, they're going to have to probably uh, give way better money, maybe uh, the kind of money that LeJerry Sneed got to leave Kansas City and go to the Tennessee Titans. Maybe if they get in front of it a little bit that they'll be able to help. Uh, curve some of those costs but yeah I, I do think Tyson Campbell is up next I think uh, the size the athleticism and the body types I really believe coach Chris Richard is going to get the absolute best out of him and I, I think he's very familiar with guy, uh, guy, guys that have played with the same skill set and the same mindset as guys like Tyson Campbell why is that important it's important for this because there's a lot of people that seem to think that the Jaguars need to be into this trade market for whatever corner that might exist because those guys have big names. And I'm telling you, sometimes that is a very, very dangerous thing to do. Right now, the, the way the, the team is constructed, they have Tyson Campbell. They signed Ronald Darby. It's a, and there ain't no guesswork when it comes to that because they know exactly who Darby is because he, he was with them previously, right? And Doug Peterson knows who Ronald Darby is. So he understands that workflow. They drafted Jari and Jones, who has looked all of the part in OTAs and minicamp. And I knew that was going to happen because I watched him play a lot and, and I thought that he was going to be a day one contributor. They signed Donnell Savage to sort of play in the slot. No one really knows where he's going to play uh, because he's a safety. But uh, sometimes if he's down there helping out with tight ends and sometimes if he's down there in the slot in certain situations, if they're going to blitz him off the corner or he's going to roam that, that flat area, that short middle of the field, then he'll probably be in that position. But that's another good situation to have when you have a guy with that kind of flexibility. But they have Chris Braswell. And they have Monteric Brown. And I know people are saying, man, we've seen Chris Bradwell. We've seen Monteric Brown. You haven't seen him in this new system. And coaches mention their names. Coaches that are, have been on the staff, the, the Trip Balky really, really likes those guys. And I do believe the new DB coaches have also looked at those guys. You, you're not going to be able to name four name brand sort of big name cornerbacks on any team. 
because if those guys think that they need to be starting, they'll be somewhere else. So I am not of one. I'm not one that thinks you need to go out and spend another $10 million on somebody. Now I'm all about talent. If something makes sense, do it and then just create more competition. But I'm not the one that thinks the Jaguars need to be out here twerking, trying to find another cornerback when they have developmental guys in the building and they've added two guys in the off season already. Yeah. At some point you have to go with your own people. This ain't the transfer portal. What this is, is you have an allocation of resources that you have to use and you have to be very, very careful with how you spread them around because if you don't, you're going to shortchange yourself at another position. So while if something out there makes a, a whole lot of sense, if something out there, uh, if a corner is just like somebody you just can't turn your back on, I get it. But I, I just don't think teams have guys out there like that and if the jaguars really wanted to address the cornerback position more than they already have they would have done it they would have done it they get they also signed another player uh the prince kid out of Ole miss they they signed another player in the draft so i said they added two they've added three and at some point the jaguars has they have to trust themselves man you have to trust your evaluation you, you can't just keep you can't just keep hedging your bets when it comes to these guys. That's why I love the commitment to the quarterback. I love the commitment to Josh Allen because what it does, yeah, DeAndre Prince, fifth round pick. He's going to be another person that's going to come in here and compete. You know, at some point you have to trust the draft. And I know a lot of people don't trust Trent Baalke drafting on day three. And that's fine for you to have that. But that's not Trent Baalke's responsibility to uh do and 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 act out what we feel he's the gm he drafted them he has to have faith in them and he has to at some point depend on these guys and hope that they work out and, and give them a shot to work out because he's the general manager we're not so whatever we feeling that ain't gonna affect how trent balky moves i don't think the jaguars need to go out and get a quarterback and i think in my opinion next up is going to be tyson campbell that's who it's going to be. It's going to be another level of, nope, we're committed to him too. And it's always going to be a good thing with me when the Jaguars retain their own players for the long term and not continue to go out here and just think that they're going to just go out and buy everything in free agency, including leadership. That's how you actually get incumbent leadership. The guys have to be incumbent and they have to be here and they have to start this culture move that starts this franchise going in the right direction. Trayvon Walker's going into year three. One more good season out of him, and guess what you're going to see? You're going to see some people saying, okay, he can't do it yet, but in year four, we're going to take care of Trayvon. Then it's going to be, hopefully, it's going to be uh, Anton Harrison, Andre Sisko. Once you start seeing a team retain their players and get their guys in and keep their guys in, and that's a signal that moving ahead – that they're not just sitting there throwing dice out and, and hoping that something happens, that they have a commitment to certain people. They believe in them. And if they can believe in them, then maybe the fans will start believing more in the team. It looks different. It feels different to actually get players who are, to actually get players who are, um, if you will, uh, being retained, that they drafted, they're not disappointed in, they're keeping them. So far, so good. They Devon Hamilton was one that they, they they got. If he gets back healthy, he's another one. It signals the end to the constant turnover that has plagued this franchise at least over the last fifteen years. And it's a new start where you're going to start seeing the same uh, the same people, the same producers, the same folks who uh, are, are are constantly trying to build on something and add to something instead of instead of tearing it down and starting over completely every single season. All right, man, we are done for today, but we're not done because we are never done here at Locked On Jaguars. It is your local, local coverage of the National Football League's Jacksonville Jaguars for you fans. I want to shout out to my military members, the guys that are from Jacksonville or guys and ladies that are from Jacksonville that are halfway around the world or somewhere where they're being deployed and they don't get a lot of local coverage. You can get that right here on Locked On every single day with me. I know what that feels like. I have been there where I could not cover 
the team or couldn't get everyday access to the team because I was around the world serving our country. Locked On has also launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the Free Fire TV channel app. And if you happen to be looking at Locked On NFL Today, I will be on there with Brian uh, Kevin Ostriker. Uh, did a segment with him also about the Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence, so make sure you check that out. All right, y'all, until tomorrow, we're going to holler at you, man. Take care. We'll see you later.